Hi, welcome to the video tutorial for two lessons on uh, rates of change, but actually we could make it three depending on how you choose to use it, how you think it's going to support the learning of your pupil. So in the came file it's lessons 23 and 27, but there's extra resources that you could use, which is where the third lesson comes from. So I've kind of given these all the same name, rates of change, same what you see, patterns of increase, because in a lot of the lessons on functions or graphs, we're asking the children to see meaning in the lines, and they're not just lines that draw the room, they're telling them something about a relationship. And this, these three, these lessons together, really, really focus on what are they seeing, how are they describing the words they're using, and how they visualise. This one's good for metacognition because it is about the pa how do they reflect upon, articulate the patterns they see, and relate that to what they to what they draw. So, the first lesson, if you look in the file lesson twenty three, is very very straightforward, but the ending is very interesting, and you could either do that in one lesson or do the first part of the lesson, which in essence is looking. The children draw a graph of b equals four a and describe it. They draw a graph of b equals a squared and describe it and compare the shapes and come up with as many words as they can use to describe it. It's a very simple, very straightforward lesson. Could be done in half an hour. The balloon and rocket activity is very, very interesting. On the PowerPoint you can see that. So the scenario is uh, there's a fair and on the fair on the summer where there's a lovely sunny day, there's no wind, there's two rides you can go on. A balloon ride and a a rocket ride. So I'll just find a blank, just find a blank sheet here. So you've got the balloon ride and the rocket ride, and I would draw a little picture of a of a balloon and a, a rocket. So okay, I'm going to show you a picture of what a graph of how they rise through the air looks like. How ambiguous you want to be is up to you. But it really, really works. And the, on the, the, after this image of a fair with the balloon rocket, on the second slide of the PowerPoint, there is a graph that looks like that. That's, that's time in the x-axis with this distance. Mm -hmm. So I would say to them, I would put that up for about one second or one and a half seconds. There's a red line and a blue line and say to them, which is the balloon, which is the rocket, and let them talk. Some of them won't have looked at it, so I'll flash it up again, which is the balloon, which is the rocket, they both go up, and let them talk. And you need to let them talk. This is deliberate, in the, the, this activity is deliberate in that it provokes children's thinking about what a graph is showing them, and that the graph isn't a picture of something in space. They think, if you added vapour to the bottom of a balloon rocket, this graph is a, is a, it shows you the vapour in the air, but it doesn't. It's showing a relationship of it's showing speed, the relationship of distance over time. But they haven't they haven't quite processed that. So this lesson is on the cusp where some of them realise there's something strange about this, but let them discuss it. Let them argue. Some will say it's definitely the rocket because it goes straight up the straight line. Others, it's the balloon is blown by the wind. And you say, but there's no wind, it's a still day. It's the stillest day there's ever been in this area. And it's absolutely fascinating how they start to realise what they're seeing. They're not seeing the balloon in the air. They're seeing a relationship that we describe as speed. Let them argue, let them discuss. It's a fascinating activity. Now that's the standard lesson that I used to do, and then the lesson called the, the third lesson called accelerating the accelerating, accelerating the acceleration. You start with that to recap them. On this, there's loads of distance times relationships you can get, and uh, uh, videos you can use. But I find that one really, really interesting because of the everyday context of the sky and seeing things in the sky. What I've suggested that you could do, just to focus on their, how the children understand graphs and what they're seeing is, you could then, you could either do the uh, B equals 4A or B equals A squared as a standalone activity, and then the next lesson, you do this activity, but then follow it up with another activity on graphs, which is where the pupils get a picture of four, they get four different scenarios. 
thing. Right? Four different scenarios where it's an everyday situation, a boy sitting on a plane, a boy dropping a spinner, some a scuba diver looking at the wreck being raised off the bottom of the sea, and someone doing a science experiment. And these these are really interesting because what they're given is they're given some data that's jumbled up and the focus is what's the relationship? What do you think this wreck might look like? And have a go at sketching it. And that really provokes a lot of discussion. It's one of the science activities that we follow. This one is about the, the, the speed for cooking an egg at different temperatures. This one shows the further off the sea floor you get, the closer to the surface, the larger the balloon, because the pressure decreases as you rise towards the surface. This one shows the shorter the arms of the spinner, the faster it drops. And this one on the temperature shows that as you rise through the air, the temperature drops. So for every 500 feet increase in altitude, the temperature drops by minus one, drops by 1.1 degrees. So each graph shows a different relationship. And I think those are worthy, worthy activities to include in this because it really focuses the children on what they're seeing and what graphs are telling us and different patterns of increase. So those are two activities you could do together. Lesson 23, 23A and 23B if you want to call it. But again, have a look in the file, read the notes, decide how you want to do it. It depends on the type of class you've got. I would use those activities because it really, really forces them to stop and think about what graphs actually mean. And as you've picked up from a lot of these activities, they've never actually stopped and thought for themselves. And I think it's important to give them that ability to think and reflect because the questions they're going to be asked at the end of Key Stage 4, and don't do it at the way level, because remember, we are preparing them for A-level, are going to be very challenging and require them to think on their own two feet.